I'm Lady Asuka and today we want to talk about animating tails, especially after the new tail update in Vroid. If you watched my last video about animating animal ears, then you know a little bit more already about the animation process in general, but for everyone new here, let's start at the beginning. Now, to get this out of the way, and because I didn't know better as well at first, I seriously thought animating tails would be as easy as with the ears. But I was wrong about that, and a lot of you guys probably tried the ear solution on your tails, and it looked like it worked in Unity just fine, but then you open it up in VC Face, and it didn't work at all, so I apologize for that. In this video, I want to cover both cases in terms of tails because we had hair made tails for the longest time. And in case you still have an older model, I want to explain the details of animating these as well. But we will also talk about the new tail feature and how it affects the animation process because it is way, way easier to do it with this new feature. First, I prep our two models here in Vroid. One with a tail made out of hair and one with a tail from the new accessories feature. After our models got equipped with their respective tails, we can start with the export. In both cases, we disable the delete transparent meshes and combine hair mesh option for our import into Unity later, as you guys probably know already. And as a reminder, for now, as of the release of this video, the VRM0 version is still a safer option for export, so I recommend selecting this here. Once your avatar is exported, we open up Unity and we need the following versions and plugins. Unity 2019.4.31 F1, UniVRM 0.98.0 and the SDK plugin version 1.13.37b. After opening a new Unity project with the version 2019, we start installing our plugins under Assets, Import Package, Custom Package, and then our first plugin should always be the UniVRM plugin, because other plugins often depend on content from it. Then we install the SDK plugin and drag and drop our avatar into a folder we create in the bottom Assets. We start first with the tail made out of hair, and thus we drag our model into the left hierarchy and switch to prefab mode, which is done by pressing the little arrow to the right of the avatar's name. Now we will find here under the root the respective hair bounds. These can look like shown here, or if you bought a pre-made tail, it can also be called something like Vroid Custom Item, or like a little bit different from the usual that you see here. But the main point is, to find the hair that is responding and showing up on the tail of the avatar, as shown here, like a little cube, for example. If you already have other hair on the model, this can be a bit more difficult to find at first. But once you found it, just remember the name and keep it inside in a way that you can see it clearly. Now we can start with the animation itself. And I want to state that the tail can't be completely freely animated. What that means is that you can't really animate every single part of this tail the way you want, in case you try to do something else than a simple tail swing. What we can animate is just the first bone of the tail, so the one that is usually closest to the butt and or hip of your avatar. I also want to take a moment to explain a fairly common problem with tails made out of hair. And since this could happen with anything made out of hair, I hope you don't mind the little interruption here. The way the bones will be set into the hair depend on the way a hair strand is drawn. So if you lead the tail from your hip area down, it will be different than if you draw the hair strand from somewhere to the hip. For something that will never move, this isn't important at all. But for hair that will bounce later or for tails, that's extremely important. As you can see here, if I put in the bones now into the correct setup tail, the first bone will be close to the hip area exactly how we want it. In our other example, the first bone would be somewhere in the air probably, and thus would make this tail sadly completely useless for animation. Back to animating our tail in Unity. Thank you for sticking around, since I usually don't have much of a chance to tell people about these little tricky details. To animate the tail, we go to our Animation tab. 
In case you don't have this tab already, you can find it under Window, Animation and Animation. We will select our avatar and press the Create button in the bottom to start our animation. Give it a unique name you can remember and press the red record button on the left. The first thing we want to do is to set an idle state, which in our case would just be the tail in its original position. To achieve that, we select the first hair or tailbone and just move the tail with the rotation tool a tiny bit before setting it back in the inspector to the right to its original rotation, which is usually zero, so it's easy to remember. Now we click along on our timeline and I will make a swinging left to right motion here. So every 50 or so seconds, I will swing the tail a bit higher up and then reverse this rotation for the next 15 seconds, which just means you put or remove the minus here before the rotation value to get the exact same rotation on the opposite side. Once we are finished with this process, we press the red button again and end our recording. Now to the most interesting part. This is a bit tricky with hair, but we go to secondary in our hierarchy and in the inspector to the right, we can find now all our spring bones, which should usually be a bunch of hair or your cat ears, for example. Spring bones means that these bones have colliders, so they don't clip through your avatar or each other even. You can see the radius of the colliders here with the yellow balls around each strand of hair. The tricky part with tails made of hair is that you can't really know which one of these is your tail. So what you can do to be sure you got the right one is change the color of them to see if any correspond with the spring bones of your tail. Or check the root bone for the name of your hair bone or tail bone, which you should know from us rotating it beforehand for our animation and which we need anyway for the next step. Once you found the right strands, it's pretty straightforward. Under the root bone here, you can set the root of the spring bone, which is usually the first bone. Now the important detail is spring bones can't be animated. So what we can do here is just select the second bone as the root bone, which removes the collider function from our first bone and thus is able to translate our animation correctly. You can also set another bone but as you can see here, it's always that all the bones before the set root bone will lose their colliders. So depending on your type of tail and animation, you should be careful with this because otherwise you risk clipping. And that's all we needed to animate the tail. Now, same as with the ears, we should also include a little button to trigger the tail. And so we switch it to blend shapes and our blend shape menu. And there we add a new blend shape clip. We could call it tail, for example, and the only thing missing is to connect it with our animation now. For that, we click on our avatar's name in the hierarchy and in the inspector to the right, we scroll down completely and add a new component. It's called VSF animations, which you may know already. With the plus button here, we add a new property and select our blend shape from the drop down menu and the corresponding animation in the option under it. Now we can export our avatar over the SDK menu and get a VSF avatar instead of our usual VM. Remember that not all trackers can work with this format, but VC Face, for example, can. Once you open your avatar in VC Face, you can set a button for your tail animation. And if pressed, the tail will start swinging around and the rest of the spring bones will follow the flow naturally without you having to animate the whole thing in detail. And as promised, we will give a quick look on how this works with tails from the accessories feature, because the main process doesn't change here. It's, as mentioned, way easier, because in the hierarchy, the tail is literally named tail or cat tail or whichever version you chose specifically. And the same goes for the part in secondary, where you will see the tail already marked as such, and thus making your life way, way easier but the rest is exactly the same. So you would grab the first bone from the accessory tail and animate it the same way we did it before with the tail made out of hair. And then you would go into secondary and disable as many spring bones as you want for the movement and set up your blend shape with your new animation and export. As you can see here, depending on how many spring bones were disabled, the results can vary a little bit. 
don't forget to subscribe if this was helpful and i see you guys in the next one i hope you have a wonderful day